Today we're going to talk about the Internet of Things and talking to our plants. Who's that good plant? Who's that good plant? <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna to talk about something different. Let's talk about IoT. You've probably heard the catchphrase Internet of Things, but what does it really mean? What does it mean to you and I? If you break down Internet of Things, it's such a broad umbrella, it really encompasses small devices that integrate with our environment around us. And so some of those things are machine to machine, devices that can talk to other devices, machine to nature, so devices that can sense when my grass needs to be watered, machine to human, so things like this that detect my heart rate to remind me to be more active. So IoT means a lot of things, but it really doesn't mean anything unless you have sensors. Sensors have been around for a long time. We've got everything from a gas sensor to GPS sensors, moisture sensors, accelerometer, color detection, you know, all sorts of sensors. These are things that you can up, but the sensors don't do anything by themselves. They need platforms, and those platforms are really what the Internet of Things are. The Internet of Things are interconnected platforms that have sensors that can convert our environment into a connected network. If you talk to businesses, they're using it to understand their industry as well as understand their business, how to be more efficient, and also how to provide better service and obviously to market to you. So let's talk about platforms. There are lots of different platforms, and each platform has its own pros and cons. Uh, platform can be something like a Raspberry Pi, which is really just a miniature computer. It runs a version of Linux, which is the operating system. It's got network, USB, audio, video, HDMI, and it's got tons of I.O. pins. That's how I could connect things, like sensors, and determine how hot it is, how humid it is, or something like that. I can process it internally and then send it out to the network to maybe, say, update my web page or something like that. There are other platforms like Arduino, or some that have Bluetooth already built onto them. So this can communicate directly over low energy Bluetooth directly to my phone. So now all of a sudden I have something that I could create a product with that can communicate with a, an app on my phone which could, then could relay information to the internet. So the devices get more intelligent and more usable the more you look around. There's something like Tesla. This is something where they think it's like the Legos of the Internet of Things platform. It has little modules you can add on to it. They give you like GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all sorts of capability. It just depends on your specific needs. There's things that are specific to garments and wearables. You know, little chips that you can embed on your shirt that will control lights. The Adafruit Flora is one of those. There's also a trinket and a couple other versions in various form factors that allow you to integrate those sort of things. They're really easy to use and they're everywhere in the industry. You can even go as far as to just get the Arduino chip and then build your own circuit board around it, something like the Steady Shop. There's something called the Onions. It's for technologies that web users are familiar with. It's got integrated Wi-Fi, Linux operating system. You can plug right in and start developing your code. One that I'm fond of that has a lot of promise for end consumer users is the particle platform. There's the particle photon, which is a Wi-Fi based IoT system. You can see how tiny it is. It's got Wi-Fi, it can connect to the internet directly, and particle has a, an integrated API that makes it really easy to raise events to the internet and consume events. Their API and this hardware is just such a, a great form factor. It's really easy to use and you can um, be creative and make things in a day. The particle electron is the same thing as the particle photon, but it's got a cellular connectivity. So it doesn't need the Wi-Fi. It's got direct cellular with a, a SIM card in the back and so I can put this on something that doesn't have access to Wi-Fi and I can program the logic and add sensors to it and it can work over a cellular network so all of a sudden this opens the opportunities on what and how you can integrate with an internet of things right so that gives you you know a good opportunity and a small form factor to create something real compelling devices if you follow the tech industry and you follow IOT you will realize that it's a moving target it's constantly reinventing itself and finding new ways to make things smaller smarter or faster um, but today what we're gonna show you is how you can pick up one of these photons or these electrons and you can make something that improves the quality of your life but just know that uh, processors are on the market now and they're very approachable it's up to us to come up with the real creative solutions we're gonna do a project that allows my plants to tell me when they need to be watered very simple and straightforward but it will show you how easy it is and really maybe give you the opportunity to inspire some creativity let's walk through those steps all right so by now you're probably asking why am I still watching this video well really, you know, this is a very simple project and it may be trivial to some more advanced users, but I think it's a good opportunity to show everybody just how approachable and easy it is to leverage the Internet of Things. And when it comes down to it, I mean, you guys have the best ideas and the Internet of Things is meant to help people and improve their lives. So this is a quick example of how you can do it. It takes only three wires and a couple components. So give it a chance, take the opportunity and do something creative. 
So for this project, we'll just be using a photon, which you can get from particle.io. Um, in addition to that, we'll be using a moisture sensor. This part gets pushed down into the soil where it'll read the resistance between the two probes. And when the resistance is appropriate, it'll send a voltage to one of the pins. And we'll use the photon API. So we'll raise an event that tells you when the plant needs to be watered. And then once you water it, the plant will say thank you again through an SMS message. Really simple and easy to wire up. Let's go through the uh, schematic for this so that you can get it plugged in. <laughs> All right, so this next step is optional. It's really about creating the schematic on circuits.io. I'll show you the process of creating it. It's good to keep organized and understand which pins you'll need to connect, but if you refer to the one that I display on screen, then you won't need to create it on circuits.io. Unless, of course, you want to make a circuit board and print it out and do all of that cool stuff to make it really uh, professional. All right, so when you purchase your Photon, you'll get it in this little box. You'll need to take it out, plug it into a micro USB, load up the iOS app. It'll allow you to connect directly to it. You can configure the Wi-Fi settings on the Photon from your iOS app. And then once you have that done, you basically claim the device and you can start programming with it. So if you go to particle.io, you can log into the IDE and you'll see your device that you just registered. So from there, we jump into code and we start writing some logic, which is really straightforward because we're only using a couple of pins on this. We're using D1 to activate the sensor to provide power to it. We're using D0 to listen for the sensor's probe to determine when it needs to be watered. And then we're just using all of the web API to send events. Um, and then we'll use if this then that to listen for those events. Very easy. Very cool. All right, so we're on particle.io and we've logged into the IDE. Um, we had to set up an account in order to log into the iOS app and register our device. So we use that same information to log into the IDE. Once you're in there, you can create an app, you can look at libraries, you can uh, look at things that other people have made, uh, but we're just gonna create an app. Our app's gonna be named Seymour. You can name yours whatever you want, but because this is about plants that are asking to be fed, then I think it's only natural that that's the perfect name. So Seymour it is, Seymour.ino is the name of the file that we'll be creating. And as we shift gears and step over and look at the logic, it's really straightforward. When you think about Arduinos and Photons, they're both using a language called wiring, very similar to C. Um, and if you're not familiar with all this, it really doesn't matter. Um, you'll just need to understand the logic. And I put some comments in there and so we can step through that and make it all clear. Um, so basically the Photon has a couple functions. Functions are things that get called. There's one called setup. We'll need to initiate how we're going to use the photon, turn on the pins and tell them how we're going to use it. And then there's a loop. That loop gets called as fast as it can. As soon as it finishes, it'll call it again. And so we need to set up the logic to process the reading of the sensor at a regular interval. And to do that, we set a couple variables because we don't want to just check it every millisecond, you know, thousands of times per second. We want to just check it every once in a while, maybe every 10 seconds or something realistic. Because if my plant needs to be watered every millisecond, then I'm, it, it's probably gonna die. So we'll, we'll measure every 10 seconds uh, and then when it needs to be watered we'll raise an event that says hey feed me and then once I water it if once it detects the water then we'll raise another event named fed me so that if this then that can do things with those different events. Um, along with the event when we raise it we'll pass in the name of the plant that's uh, raising the event that way we know who sent that message. This section of code deals with setting variables. If you remember back to algebra these are just representations for numbers. We put them all at the top to make it easier so that we can change those values down the road. If I want it to wait longer, or if I want to use a different pin, then I can just change that value and everywhere else uh, benefits from that. So the setup, we're really just setting up a couple pins. We're setting up the sensor pin as output. That's how we're gonna charge it. So when we turn on that sensor pin, it's gonna give power to the sensor. And then we're also gonna have a probe pin, and we're setting that as an input pin so that we know that we'll be listening on that pin to determine when the sensor says it needs water. Um, in addition to that, we use the digital write the probe as high, and that basically uh, gives it a reference. Next is the loop. So the loop is really what's going to be executing and the way we're going to deal with it is once every 10 seconds it's going to check the sensor. And so in order to do that it first needs to turn the sensor on. And so it'll turn the sensor on by providing it power, giving voltage to that pin. It's going to wait a second, let the sensor start up. We'll read the probe and see is it ready? Is it not? If it is then we'll send the, the particular event just by using the particle.publish giving an event name. It could be anything. Just you have to remember that 
for when we set up if this and that, and then pass in some data, you know? In this case, I'm just passing in studio. That's the name of the plant that we'll be watering. And then we can also check if the probe value is not high and it's low, then it's then it doesn't need to be watered. Maybe it just got watered. So then we can raise another uh, event. We can publish another event using the particle.publish uh, function. And then we'll pass in fed me and then say studio. Let's go over to if this and that and we'll show you how to configure that. If this then that is really useful tool for merging uh, different services and websites that are uh, available on the internet. And you can automate some of the tasks that you would typically want to do with those services. And so if you're not familiar with it, then go check it out over at ifttt.com. The first thing you'll need to do is set up an account, sign up, and then you'll have to link some channels. And so if you click on channels and you start to scroll through there, there's literally hundreds of them. Well, there's also one for particles. So we can load up the particle channel and we'll be able to leverage that in our recipes. In our particular recipes, we're going to create two recipes, one that listens for the feed me event and one that listens to the fed me event. For either one of those, I'm going to construct a custom message that I'm going to text message it to myself so that when my plant gets dry, it's going to raise the event that says feed me and that's going to go to if this then that who's listening for that event. And then we're going to create a text message that says, hey, water the plant in the studio. And then after a couple minutes, the plant will say, hey, thanks for watering me in the studio. It's really simple, really easy but to see how it's all wired up and how you can interconnect these different things hopefully inspires you to leverage the internet of things um, and that's what it's all about using technology in a way that improves the quality of our life so this is just something simple and silly but maybe it gives you insight on how you can leverage something like this all right, so we're almost done. Now we're ready to test it. We finished the code on particle.io. We flashed the photon with the code that we created. And now we've got our breadboard here that's got the photon, it's got the sensor. We've got the three wires that we talked about connecting and it's got this, the moisture sensor here. So what we're gonna do is plug it into this plant. We're gonna stick it into the soil and then we're gonna plug in our battery here. And if all goes well, it should detect that the plant's dry and it should send that event up to if this then that, which will then receive the event and create Create the text message and send it to the phone. Just like we planned. And then if we water this plant, and it should cause the moisture to be detected, which will send us another notification for the plant saying thank you. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. Wiring it up was all a piece of cake, and Photon's infrastructure makes it all too easy. So, but this was just a quick demonstration of what you can do. So get out there with and come up with some great ideas and start making things. I challenge you to explore the different platforms that are available and start using if this and that to see how you can benefit from it. You can do all sorts of cool things with it. Wow. Wow, this was supposed to be a short video and it just got out of control. I apologize for the length, but hopefully it was interesting and held your attention. Until next time, have fun and stay safe. Who knew a plant could be so needy?